I pay just $900 a month for a three bedroom, 2,200 square foot apartment. Um, and I think that's pretty good value. Comes with its own gymnasium, comes with its own swimming pool, private parking, and you know everything else that you could imagine in a great facility. Hi everyone, I live on the island of Penang in Malaysia and I just wanted to share this view from my balcony with you looking across to the mainland to Palau Tikus Island which you can see just out there in the distance and as we come round to the left the Penang Swimming Club which is a mere three minutes walk away. I absolutely love it and of course this is my own little private beach. So stay with me and I'll tell you some more secrets about Penang. Hi everyone, my name is Keith Hockton. I'm the International Living Malaysia correspondent. Lived here now for 14 years. Hard to believe, um, but we have 14 years. So how did that process start? We lived in Sydney, we had an amazing lifestyle. I'd never really thought about moving, or if I had thought about moving, it wasn't going to be for, you know, for years because, you know, I was enjoying, you know, kind of living in Sydney and diving and scuba diving and doing all that kind of stuff. And then my wife subscribed to International Living, and then the thought process began in earnest. So one day I came home and there were sticky notes, you know, those little yellow sticky notes, and they were all over the fridge, basically saying think about moving to Malaysia. And then they would be on my pillow at night and then they would be on the car steering wheel when I got out, you know, to go to work in the morning. And, um, and it, was a, it was a pretty serious endeavor, I have to say. So about two weeks into it, and I think we must have boosted Sticky Note's share price uh, by the amount that she used. Uh, we were having dinner and I thought I'd raise the subject. And so I said to her, hey, are you serious about moving to Malaysia? And she just looked at me and she said, and smiled, she did smile. And she said, you know, how stupid are you? <laughs> and I laughed back and I said, you know how stupid I am. You've been married to me for a long time. So that was really the, the process that's got a, that started us thinking. And we then decided there and then that we were gonna make the move. We decided to sell our house, which sold way quicker than we thought it was going to. And suddenly we were in moving mode. We decided not to bring anything with us apart from artwork and three suitcases. And we left like literally four months later and arrived in Penang in Malaysia. So why did we choose Penang? And I think this pretty much is pretty much standard for every country that you guys should be looking at. We looked at language issues and we were pretty crap at languages, to be honest with you. Um, even though now I, I actually speak Malay, but we're pretty crap at, um, at languages. So we just decided that Malaysia speaks English. Everybody here speaks English. It's the number one business language of the country. So we knew that we could arrive and that we could converse and we could do all that kind of stuff. So we didn't have to learn another language. That was important. Then we knew all the signage was in English as well um, because Malaysia used to be a British colony up until 1957 when they were given independence and all the laws are in English. They're based on Westminster, the Westminster system. Um, so we knew all that kind of stuff and it, we, you know, it, it just made everything, everything so much easier. Um, we applied to an agent to get MM2H, you have to, and that came through in, in three or four months and suddenly we were here. Um, it was, it was that easy. And I think that's the, the, the important point. When you start to think about moves like this, life-changing moves, then it all slots into to place pretty easily. You can make it happen if you want to. You know, you can take that leap of faith if you want to. And that's the, the secret to it. And we wanted to. So we arrived here not knowing anyone rented, uh, took out a six month lease on an apartment because we weren't really too sure where we wanted to live and then decided that we would say yes to every single thing that came our way. So, uh, you know, there's various different Facebook groups. We joined all those. In fact, we'd actually joined those before we came. So we knew 
everything that was going on. And within a week of arriving, we made a very good set of local friends who are still our friends now, some 14 years later. Um, you know, a very kind of serendipitous meeting. But that's the way things happen. It's, it all kind of happens that way. And then we attended beach barbecues. We, we then joined the Penang Swimming Club, which is a five-star facility with um, sailing and power boats, scuba diving, God, numerous restaurants, um, state-of-the-art gymnasium, great library, and more importantly, 7,000 local members. So, and that was really important because we wanted to make friends. We wanted to meet, you know, local people. We also joined the Penang Sports Club because uh, my wife plays tennis. So we joined that and we met a completely different group of people. So pretty quickly, we met a ton of people. And what you then do is go through the process of, I guess, elimination on both parts whether you fit in with them, whether they're the right tribe, you know, for you. And one thing I will say is that that does take a little bit of time, but it's a lot of fun in the process, just kind of meeting people, you know, people that you would never ordinarily meet, and then taking that process to a, a more confined group of closer friends where you end up, you know, seeing people and, and, you know, you have your tribe. You finally found your tribe. So that all took place. So once you, did, once you do that, then, then it's all about the fun. It's about the exploration of the country. It's about finding things that you want to do. You know, my wife plays tennis. Uh, I go hiking quite a lot. Nowadays, we play pickleball. I know. <clears throat> we play pickleball a lot, um, three times a week. And again, it's a completely different group. Um, and in between all of that, you find other stuff that you do. So for me... I, I, I don't think you ever retire. I think what you end up doing is finding something that you're passionate about. And if you're passionate enough about it, you love it, and then you end up doing it. So I, I'd written a book. My background isn't that. My background was investment banking. And, but I wrote a book when I was in Australia, so I knew I had the ability to write. I was a massive historian, um, always have been all my life. So I became a chronicler of Penang's history, really, in Malaysia. So I started writing books. I wrote my first book about Malaysia in 2011. I formed a publishing company in 2015. And we suddenly became a real publisher because we had authors that we were then hiring. And I'd never thought about doing any of this kind of stuff before I came to Malaysia. But I guess the point I'm going to is that when you move to a new place, you, you become inspired by the new place and you can reinvent yourself in the new place. And that's also a really important thing. <clears throat> so I did all that. And then from the publishing company, you know, obviously lockdown came about in 2020, 2021. I decided then to start a podcast um, because I always wanted to. <laughs> and I remember once a guy that I was talking to saying that I had a great face for radio. I, I don't think that's a compliment. But anyway, I started a podcast, a history podcast, which ended up doing okay. It's being played now in over 120 countries called Rearview Mirror Chronicles. And again, I wouldn't have done that had, if you go back to the Genesis, I wouldn't have done that had we not been reading International Living and had we not decided to move to Malaysia. So all these crazy, amazing, fun things that just kind of happened uh, when, you know, when you have the passion. Other great things about Malaysia, I mean, there's, there's so many incredible things. The flora, the fauna, um, it's outstanding. You know, from the tiniest orchids, most beautiful orchids, to a tiger reserve um, just across on the mainland. You know, there's so many incredible things here. There's great hiking. There's tennis, there's international golf, standard uh, courses. Um, there's all this crazy kind of stuff going on here that seemingly the, the hours blur into days and the days blur into weeks and suddenly we're in March, you know, 2024. I mean, how crazy is that? Uh, I don't know where the time goes. But what I do know is that I have this amazing lifestyle in Malaysia. I love it. I love the people of Malaysia. They are hands down, the friendliest people in all of Asia, hands down. And 
the makeup of them is exotic. So Malaysians are Malay Malaysians, Chinese Malaysians, and Indian Malaysians, followed by us and, you know, a, a variety of other mixes. Um, but they are the loveliest people in the world, hand down. I also love that we're in the center of Southeast Asia, so traveling is really easy. That's really cool. Um, you can literally pop off to Cambodia or Thailand or Bali, you know, any of those kind of places because Penang has its own international airport. Obviously, Kuala Lumpur, the capital, has its international airport. Um, Singapore is not that far away. You know, it's basically a seven-hour drive, but we're only a three-hour drive to Thailand. So popping into Thailand for the day um, is doable. We've done it. We've actually popped into Thailand just to have lunch. So, you know, you can do crazy things like that. And it's a really, really, really simple process. So they're just some of the things I love about Malaysia. And I haven't even talked about the incredible food. Oh, my God. Malaysia, again, hands down, the best foodie place in Southeast Asia. Durians. I don't know whether you've heard of durians, but they're this massive, you know, kind of fruit, this bread-like, you know, fruit. Um, they're the smelliest fruit in the world. In actual, in actual fact, most hotels ban them everywhere in the world. But even now, just thinking about it, my mouth is salivating because I love durians. The taste of durian is something else. So food here is pretty spectacular. Street stalls, absolutely amazing. Um, and it's one of the things that draw international visitors here all the time because it's Malaysia is known as a foodie capital. So from Malacca to Kuala Lumpur to Penang uh, to Ipoh, uh, you know, across in Kuching, the food is spectacular. Um, and you know when you've become a real Penangite when you're eating breakfast <laughs> and you're already talking about lunch. It's just crazy. Someone told me that when I first came here and I'm like, who does that? You do it now because the food here is so good. So yeah, lots of positive things to, to do here. And what I'm going to be doing is you're going to see a whole collage of videos kind of coming up now of Penang and where I live. Um, but it, Malaysia isn't just Penang. It's Kuala Lumpur, the capital, a vibrant, thriving capital. You know, you've got international tennis matches taking place there, sporting events, Formula One uh, GP, golfing events. All this kind of stuff happens um, in Malaysia and in, in Kuala Lumpur. Malacca, another historic capital, UNESCO listed, just like we are here in Penang, uh, has a Portuguese history going back to the 15th century. Penang actually has a British history going back to 1786. That's when the first British East India Company officer set foot on this island. And the rest, as they say, is history. So some pretty amazing things about Malaysia. It's not just beaches and national parks and scuba diving and wild animals and flora and fauna and all the, the incredible stuff. It's got an amazing history to it, which is one of the things that drew me here. Um, so yeah, all of, the, um, all of the above. And I go back to the people. The people are incredible. It's one of the, the best things about it. Um, what else is going on though? Oh, we, we, we just had a new king um, take the throne, which, which I'm actually really excited about. I'm not a royal fan in the sense of the word, King Charles and all that kind of stuff. I'm not that. But I am excited about the new king in Malaysia, or the Agong, as he's called. I think it's going to be a very exciting era from 2024 onwards. It's also the year of the dragon, which is super exciting. Um, so I think Malaysia is about to take off in a very big way, in a very positive way. And I can't wait, really. I, I get goosebumps just thinking about that. I can't wait to see how all of that develops and, you know, moves forward. So let's go for a bit of a walk around Malaysia with this collage. And then I'll come back to you and tell you a little bit more. So we've just had Chinese New Year, and this is one of the, the last celebratory kind of dances of the dragon that sees in the, the New Year. And I was lucky enough to be invited along to this private gig, actually, where I was witness to this incredible display of dr the dragon dance so it's pretty something and it was pretty special to you know to be invited along and to to witness this first time i've seen it in the entire time i've been here 
And as we move away into Georgetown, this is the famous E&O Hotel. And as you move further into Penang, this is Fort Cornwallis, one of the oldest forts, and of course the Queen Victoria Tower. And just along the, the same frontage, we have the Cenotaph, which was built in 1914 to celebrate, you know, the, the First World War, Second World War, you know, etc. And what you can see across there is mainland Malaysia. And of course, right next to the Cenotaph, there's an area called the Padang. So at weekends, this is filled with people playing football and cricket and all sorts of really crazy good stuff. And then... My favorite cemetery in Penang, the oldest, uh, established in about 1787. Uh, it's a very beautiful, very contemplative place to go as you um, just to get away from Georgetown. And of course, then there's the crazy fireworks that take place uh, during Chinese New Year right outside my balcony, uh, which was pretty amazing. And then we're back into Georgetown again. So this is just one of the quiet streets. This is actually Love Lane, where there's lots of little cafes and restaurants. This is the oldest temple in Penang, Chinese temple, established in 1805 to the, the sea goddess Kuan Yin. And then just down the road from that, you've got one of the oldest mosques in Penang. It's truly beautiful inside. Um, and this is in, all in the street of, streets of harmony. Moving on to my favorite mansion, the Blue Mansion, which was once a Captain China's house, one of the richest men in the world at the time. And then I thought I'd take you to where I play pickleball two or three times a week, which I absolutely love. Mostly locals, and they're incredibly welcoming. I absolutely love playing there. Nice little bakery just to finish off on this bit of a whirlwind tour um, where you can have your selection Great coffee in truly amazing surroundings. Um, again, a nice little pocket of Georgetown just to get away from it all. And then I thought I'd just finish with the view from my office before we get back to talking about Penang. So that's a bit of a whirlwind trip around Georgetown in Penang. And of course, I didn't show you anywhere else in Malaysia because I live in, in Penang. Um, other great things about living in Penang is the healthcare. An amazing amount of hospitals here. I think there's something like 13 hospitals in Penang and they're all amazing. The, the healthcare in Malaysia is first rate. If you wanna see a specialist of your choice, you don't have to get a referral from a GP. You can literally research the specialist you'd like to see, rock up at that hospital any given day. Once you've registered, you will see him within an hour or so. Um, it's incredible, an amazing service. And I don't know where anywhere, anywhere else in the world where you could possibly do that. So that's actually pretty good. The other amazing thing here is property rentals. Um, you saw the beach that I live on. I pay just $900 a month for a three bedroom, 2,200 square foot apartment. Um, and I think that's pretty good value. Comes with its own gymnasium, comes with its own swimming pool private parking and you know everything else that you could imagine in a great facility. I'm just gonna pan around a little bit so you can see, obviously the kitchen is there. Um, and what you have behind me is a, is a really quite a large living space, as you can see. Uh, so we've got 2,200 square feet, three bedrooms, three bathrooms, kitchen, uh, maid's room. Uh, we've got an office, which is just back here. Um, but the really cool thing, which is what I wanna show you, um, is the views um, and it was the real selling point. So this apartment, 2,200 square feet, it rents out for $950 a month. And this is really what you're paying for. I mean, great apartment, but this is really it. So I'm just gonna pan around slowly and you can see the beach directly below me. So we now live on this beach and you can see how many people are on it. Um, it's about as crowded as you'll ever see it. The nice thing in the background is that you've got views of mainland Malaysia, um, and that's Palau Tikus Island as well, so it's just a little island out there that we can kayak to. Um, you can see the water's very calm. And if I pan around just a little bit, I just want to show you the apartments um, on that side. Um, these guys are quite new and they're 6,000 square feet 
and they rent out for two thousand dollars a month. So two thousand two hundred square feet, nine hundred and fifty bucks a month. Six thousand square feet, uh, two thousand dollars a month. And I know that anywhere in the U.S., in Miami, or any of those kind of places, these apartments, those apartments especially, will be renting out for about ten to to twelve thousand dollars per month. And you can do that here in Penang. So $2,000 a month gives you 6,000 square feet of luxury. And I'm just gonna pan around again, just so you can see the, the beach, which is quite incredible. Um, and it really is quite spectacular. Hi everybody, welcome to Georgetown, Penang. My name is Keith Hoxton, I'm International Living's Malaysia correspondent and what we're going to be doing this morning is showing you around the various areas of Penang that you might consider living if you move to Penang. Where we are at the moment is actually incredibly historic. So we're in a street called Kampong Malabar. Um, this street and Chulia Street which is that way and Campbell Street which is that way um, are some of the oldest streets in Penang dating back to the, the early 1800s and there's a lot going on here back at that time. These shop houses are effectively what you can rent if you're living in Georgetown um, and right next door to us is, uh, is a house where there's two Australians who live in Georgetown um, and they live here primarily because they can step outside their front door um, and they have access to cafes and restaurants and bakeries and all that kind of stuff and they don't need a car which is one of the reasons why you live here but we have to be a little bit quiet because they're just there and that's one of the reasons why people live in Georgetown because they don't need a car and you can literally walk outside your door and you have this amazing feast of everything on your doorstep so welcome to Georgetown talked about not having a car in Penang and this is how I actually get around Penang. So getting around by bike is a lot easier because traffic really picks up around midday um, and gets worse as you go into the afternoons. This is by far the easiest ride and it served me very well for just over six years. This is Campbell House and we're about to come into Campbell Street. Campbell House is an amazing boutique hotel um, built around the turn of the century. But the great thing about Campbell House is they do the best coffee in Penang. And that's where I'm heading first thing this morning to grab my coffee before we head out around Georgetown and show you what else is here. One of the things that Penang is actually known for is its street art. And we get a lot of tourists here just coming to see the street art alone. We just happened to be walking along Campbell Street and here's an amazing street artist doing exactly that. How cool is that? Campbell Street Market. So we're just around the corner from Kampong Malabar where we showed you that amazing house, the shop house that you could live in in Georgetown. This is only a two minute walk away from that house. And again, one of the reasons why people live here. So the expats that live in Georgetown come here, they shop for their groceries, there's organic goods. And as you can see, a bustling market of pretty much everything you need for Georgetown living. This is an amazing delicacy that's only made for Chinese New Year. It's a sticky rice and you can't actually dip into it with a spoon. You actually have to steam it, then you cut it with a knife into chunks. But the great thing about this is that once Chinese New Year is over, that's it gone for another year. So very good thing to have for Chinese New Year. Guys, this is Cha Bin Hoon. It's one of the best breakfasts you can have in Campbell Street Market, and you can have it all for one ringgit sixty. Amazing. If you live in Georgetown, this is one of the bakeries that you can walk to from your house. So where we started filming over in Kampong Malabar, that's only two minutes over that way. Great thing about that is here, you get a coffee shop, you get some of the best bread in Penang, all on your doorstep, which is why expats live in Georgetown. So here we are on the corner of Love Lane and Chulia Street. This is a really vibrant part of Georgetown, and this whole street here, as, as well as being one of the oldest streets um, in Penang, it's actually where all the um, cheaper hotels are, the backpacker hostels are, all the way running down there. What you have here is an amazing array of restaurants and cafes and street food and 
and at night time this place is just buzzing it's absolutely vibrant what's also really amazing about this particular spot here is that this house or this piece of land here back in 1805 was where Sir Stamford Raffles actually had his house so the guy who discovered Singapore this is where he lived so he would have literally walked out onto the corner of Love Lane and Julia Street and this was his area that for me is what Georgetown's about as well as all of this its history is just incredible okay ladies and gentlemen we're just off Love Lane and this is really amazing it's none of the reason why you live in Georgetown because this is all in a prelude to Chinese New Year and what you have behind you is a hundred year old temple with some of the biggest joysticks all getting ready for Chinese New Year which starts in a week's time very exciting place to be This is the hardware market in Georgetown where any of the expats and locals who live here, this is where they come when they're buying goods. This gentleman here who's making the keys is world famous. He's been here a very long time. The best key maker in Malaysia. And everything you need from a hardware perspective you can get here at a fraction of the price in any of the shops in town. We're standing outside St. George's Church. Um, and this building was built in 1818 by the British East India Company. So we're talking 200 years this year, which makes it a really significant year for the church. The really cool thing about here is that right across the road, you've got the law courts, which were the first law courts for the British in Malaysia. Just over there, you've got the Padang, which is, and Fort Cornwallis, which is where Francis Light originally landed in 1786. So this whole area here is steeped in history. And if you live in Georgetown, it's one of the best things about it, especially for me, because I wander out and I actually see Georgetown as it was almost 200 years ago. So quite a special place to be. This is actually a really special place. Behind me is the iconic Eastern and Oriental Hotel, which was built by the Sarkis brothers, brothers who came from Armenia all the way to Penang in the 1880s. Um, and they're reminiscent of, a, of, of immigrants that came to Penang for all the same reasons that we're coming here now. Um, which makes this place really amazing. And just to your right hand side now, what you've got is an incredibly iconic 1930s building called The Garage. Um, and it's one of a kind in Malaysia, there's no other building like it. And again, it just kind of takes you back to that nostalgic time in Malaysia when it was a really amazing place to be. And this whole area really, if you live in Georgetown, this is all within walking distance of, of where you live. Quite, quite astounding actually. Gurney Drive is also very popular with, uh, with Australians, Australian service personnel who are working over in Butterworth on the Air Force Base over there. Um, a lot of those guys actually live in this area because Gurney Plaza is just literally down the road, uh, which is where cold storage is and they do all their shopping. Apartments here are also quite sizable. The ones behind me go for about 600 square meters and rent out for about two, two and a half thousand dollars per month. Um, but you're on Gurney Drive. The other nice thing about Gurney Drive is that you've got a market at night time, a food market up here that opens up here at night time, uh, which is all uh, Penang based Malaysian street food, which is kind of cool. Um, and this is also a great promenade for walking in mornings and evenings. And you often get a lot of runners and walkers coming up here at both those times of the day. So a really nice area to be based in. This is another area that's becoming very popular with expats. So we're now in Straits Quay, um, just a little bit further down from where we were before in Gurney Drive, heading north on the island. And this whole development here 10 years ago wasn't here. This was all ocean, but now it's landfill and luxury apartments by the dozen. So very popular place for captains of industry, for retired expats, and expats who actually want use of a marina, which is just over there. So if you have a boat, the perfect place to be. So here we are in the suburb of Tanjumbunga, which is one suburb down from Straits Quay, still heading further north towards Batu Ferengi. The great thing about this area is that you have undisturbed beaches, you have the Penang Swimming Club right behind us, the Cove and one Tanjong Luxury Apartments behind us, 
um, and just down here, your own private apartment block on what is a completely undisturbed beach. It's about as busy as it gets. You can't go through Tanjong Bunga without coming to Sri Ananda, which is probably one of the best Indian restaurants in Penang. Um, and the other great thing about Tanjong Bunga, which is where this is, that Dalat International School is just across the road. Um, and it's within a three minute walking to the Cove and one Tanjong Apartments. Let's go eat. We are in Basu Ferengi, the last stop on our where to live in Penang point. So Basu Ferengi is heading further north around the island uh, and this is actually where we stayed when we first came to Penang in 2010, very early 2010. The great thing about the apartments behind us um, is it's a good place to base yourself if you don't know Penang very well. The other really cool thing here is that you've got a beach right across the road which is fantastic and the apartments only rent out for about $600 a month. For that, you get 1,200 square feet, uh, three swimming pools, a gymnasium, tennis courts, and squash courts. What more could you want? So just two of the things to, to finish on that I think is uh, exceptional value. You know, earlier on I spoke about the food and the restaurants and the cafes and the clubs that you can join where you'll meet a thousand different people um, from all different walks of life. And I think one of the other things is that to just to, to kind of set it in your mind, when you move to a new place, it doesn't matter where you go, but wherever you move to, you actually have to make the effort to get to know people. And that's part of the fun of moving to a new place. That's part of the excitement of moving to a new place. So come to Penang, come to Malaysia. It's the most incredible country in the world. One of the best kept secrets ever. And say hi. And I look forward to you coming. See you guys.